Welcome back to Up in the Blue Seats, our New York Rangers podcast from New York Post. I'm former Ranger Brian Boyle. No Molly this week, but we do have our Hall of Famer here with me from the New York Post, the great Larry Brooks. All right, Larry, we got to get right into it. I want to know what you think about the hit on Mika Zibanejad. Matthew Pellick at center ice. I don't, I don't know. I don't see a lot there. Well, first, let, let me tell you that the, the emotion emanating from Peter Laviolette was palpable last night. I, I was like, you know, a, a foot away from him, a foot and a half away from him. <laughs> and he was almost like hyperventilating. He was irate. He was livid. He was fuming. And I actually said to Molly last night that I would not want to be in the position of being a player, being called into his <laughs> office and being on the other side of a, of a one-way message. There, there's worse, there's worse my, places. There's yeah. worse coaches' offices. I'll I'll say okay, that. But right. he does get but, he does get fired up. He but he was, you know, he was fuming. And from my perspective, I I don't think there's any evidence that Pellick intentionally elbowed shouldered Mika in the head but I also think that it is possible that it's very cleverly disguised because I don't think the the one thing to me is that Pellick doesn't seem surprised at all by the collision like he knows he knows it's coming it seems to me that he knows it's coming now I saw it from from the back and I, I haven't you know Peter Laviolette and the players were right there. You know, it was, it was right in front of them. So they had a much, much better view of it than I did. Um, but I just know, you know, now does Pellick have a responsibility if he, if he sees out of the corner of his eye, Mika charging across the ice and Pellick's now stationary and girding himself? Does he have any responsibility to get out of the way? No. No, right? No. Did I call him Matthew? I meant did I not did I not call him Adam Pellick? I don't know. I fought Matthew Pellick once. I think they might be related. But he look, that was so I so I don't know, but, but he was so angry. He he seems so certain. You know, he of, has of to see, he had had to have seen it a different way. Because yeah. I I don't see anything there. And maybe me and maybe Mika saw it that way too. Maybe you know, again again, now this is just pure speculation. So you know, there's no re really reason to go there, but um, he he was certain, and from what I understand, uh, Patrick Waugh was shocked. And, yeah, his he and was when, when he was you know he got these it. questions, you know, and suddenly you he know they funny. win this huge, you know, they win this huge game. They they wind up you know hanging on in, in you know the entire third period, but they you know hey they won the game. That's all that counts. Um, and he's, and I assume he's, you know, he thinks he's going to have this, you know, mini triumphant you know, press conference and it's kind of like, Hey, what about this dirty play? And it's like, what, I, why, why are we talking about this? So, but you know, the other thing I'm sure that charged up, uh, Peter was the non-call on the, on the, on the Dobson hit from behind on Trocek. It was bad. And you know, yeah, that was a bad 10 result. Ten seconds left in the game. It was a violent hit from behind. Mm -hmm. It it should have been a, a you know a game is a five minute game, and game misconduct. So honestly, it it should be reviewed um, by the league. But but the lack of a call there was just disgraceful. So um, and and he was and he was livid about that one too. So maybe maybe the two combined you know created this this. Um, this uh, boiling point for him, but he, he was certain. He was certain. No, no, yeah. doubt about it. I, I mean, he's, he's not, and he left no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. He's, and he's not, he doesn't just come in guns blazing. He's obviously a smart guy. He's dealt with media for a very long time. He's been a head coach for a very long time. Yeah. Now the, the Trocheck one, and I'm not trying to make excuses for the Islanders, but you're not letting anyone get towards your net. He reaches up. He's off balance. He's a few feet away from the boards. You know, a 50% push there can do 100% damage. Mm -hmm. You just can't hit a guy in the numbers when he's in a vulnerable spot like that. That 100% is a penalty. And, you know, that's tough. So it's it's interesting, too, because I, I was on Friday night. I went to St. Louis, and we had a big 
uh, charity event for the V Foundation, NHL alumni versus Blues alumni. And Kelly Chase did the whole thing. And George Paris was there and he played. Mm-hmm. And after the game, I had to talk to him. I just, I was in training camps with George way back when I was just starting out and had played against him a bunch. I had a lot of respect for him as a, as a player. Right. You know, he did things on the ice where he had to protect, he inserted himself into situations where he had to protect his teammates. Now he's inserted himself in an unenviable, just why would you do this to yourself sort of job that really is thankless. So I was trying to pick his brain a little bit on the criteria and how he goes about everything. And for about 25 minutes, he explained to me basically his job, how he goes through everything. It's, I'm telling you, Larry, this is like, it's the worst job ever. In my opinion It's so hard for him. And in different scenarios, like the Caden Gooley slash recently where he was on the bench mm. and you could look at other slashes like that was more vicious than this and that. And it's, it's, a, it's almost like, and I'm speaking now in my own, how I kind of, processed everything it's almost like when you're a kid and your parents have rules and you think your sibling or whatever somebody gets away with a little bit more in certain situations than the other person does like you're always gonna feel slighted <laughs> like that and but they're all it's it's never apples to apples with what george does he right. it's he stresses over everything he's got a team in place uh, with the number of people it goes down the line there's a there's a bunch of eyeballs on certain things he goes at the end of the day you know i'm responsible for handing out whatever the discipline is whether there is some or isn't some so i get all the heat obviously and I, that's my job but well you know what this well, is what goes into it it's crazy yeah. how many people are I'm, i recognize that but I, I i think a couple of things without without getting into long drawn out conversation with this one thing is they are prisoners of their own precedents that have been established by a pattern of leniency. Are they not coming out of that a little bit? I'm sorry? Are they not starting to come out of that in the last maybe two, I, three I, months? You, you think that they are, but then then they slide back. I, you, yeah. do, you know, it, 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 it's, it's very difficult. The other thing is, and I just, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, it, it's interesting to me that they have that they have had a series of um George Paros type people in, in that position instead of having skilled guys in that position saying, wait a second, you can make every rationalization you want for why this guy hit me in the head. You, know, you can break it down to the 30 sec, you know, the, the one sixteenths of a set, you know, you can just break it down and tell me why, but I want to know why, why I, you know, why he's not skilled enough to avoid me on that play. You know, why I, Brian Leach, you did this job for a while and, and left. And, you know, he, he was, he was there for a short time. Um, you know, I bet Shanahan started it. Shanahan, mm-hmm. you know, created the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the video. Department? Yeah, well, he essentially oh. was a, a disciplinarian, Coley, uh, Coley hand mm-hmm. for a long time. Right. And then they hired uh, Shani, and he created, the, he, it was all all on his own. I remember we actually went out to lunch one day, and he said, hey, what would you think about this? Um, and so he actually, he you know, he, he created the modern Department of Player Safety. Um and and you know there's Stefan Cantal took over the job yep. for a short time. Um, He's still there. Uh, you know I think Pronger was 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 involved, right? That's funny. And 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 that's the kind of pe- <laughs> George Paris. I mean that's the kind of people that, that you know these are the, you know these are the well the Pronger and Pronger and Paris are different animals. I mean, yeah, Paris well no no that's that wasn't fair. a dirty player. Oh, was just, who wasn't? Who wasn't? Paris was not a dirty player. Oh, oh okay. No oh no fair enough. Fair enough. Pronger is a dirty player. He'll tell you he's a dirty player. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, but it, it is interesting how, but it, so much did go into it. I wish I had, because Shani was there too on Friday night. Actually, he played. He yeah. was looking for some cookies, trying to score. It's, yeah. you know, I wanted to score. But I was trying to pass it to Dave Coulier, the full house guy. He couldn't bury back door. I was getting rattled, but <laughs> 7-7 tie. Anyways, it's, 
that's hockey and it's it's playoff time now for the Islanders. If it was game one of a yeah. playoffs or game seven of a playoffs, and I'm in I'm I'm Adam Pellick and I'm listen, I get it. I, I and Mika's coming it, across, I'm standing my ground. If he runs I, into I my shoulder, it. it's his I responsibility. It. You know, yeah, first I center. It. I mean, and that's yeah. I hope he's okay. The the Trocheck one, you got some you know, you got a you got a little bit of a, an argument there because he just got yeah. blown up from yeah. behind it. I played so when I came back and played it was towards the end of the season, my first or second year in Tampa. There was a puck behind the net. There was a battle going on. I'm looking at the puck, and I brace myself with Dan Girardi. And he, we were pretty much at the net, on the right side of the net, behind the goal line, but right by the back of the net. And I gave him kind of a little shove. And when he went, I, I tell you, he went flying. I, I couldn't believe. I, remember I literally just kind of braced myself. Oh, thinking he was going to bump me, he went flying into the board. I, I, back. you know, I remember. He was out cold. Remember that. And Keith Yandel comes and punches me in the face. I'm like, what just happened? I had no idea what happened. Yeah. They gave me a match penalty. That's I'm getting crazy. tossed off the ice. We have our goalie pulled, and I'm like, what? What are we doing? I, that's not even a penalty. I, we should be on the power play. I just got punched in the face. And I watched the replay. I'm like, oh my God, that looked bad. I honestly didn't do anything. <laughs> I was just a little stronger than G. Sorry, G. Love you, buddy. I had to call him after, and I never, I was never the guy to like call and check in if a guy was okay after a hit. I thought that was stupid. I didn't, I didn't understand why people did that. It's like we're playing hockey. Really? I mean, if if you put a guy in the the hospital or something, you wouldn't check in. In the hospitals, yeah, that's different. Um, Yeah, but during like. if if you if you can cuss the guy, you know, and he was out for a month or so, you know, you knew he was going through a tough time. Yeah, me, man, maybe. I just never. I mean, it happens to me. It'll happen to you. And I mean, I got hurt. Luke Shen hit me, and I was kind of buddies with him. He hit me, hurt my knee when I, I uh, my fourth year in New York. He reached out, but like two months prior, we're in the Bahamas together at All Star Break, hang, like having right. beers. So we, like that was like, yeah, I'll be fine. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't even know what I did. I'm like, you didn't do anything. Like my my leg was in the air, and you hip checked me, and my I tore Chris my MCL. Neal. Chris Neal didn't reach out. Apparently, at the end of the series, he was talking with Torts in the handshake line, and Torts oh. came up to me after Game Seven, and I was still in Mala Land, but I was at the game. Yeah, and he said Chris Neal wanted to check on you, see how you're doing. And I think my response was to the effect of "f that guy." I don't <laughs> I'm care. Sure. No, I'm sure it was. Yeah, like when that's the thing. Like I don't, care. Yeah. whatever. But I, I don't, I don't see anything there. Patrick Wad just, I mean, he summed it up nicely. He just yeah. said, "You know, that's it. That's all. There's yeah. nothing there." <laughs> well, you know, you know what too, the, and 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 I and I believe this was a, a you know display of honest emotion that the, there was no uh, you know. He had to have seen some angle or how, how, a certain way. What I also think is that his Laviolette's full-throated defense of his team and the way he talked about how hard they battled and how hard it was, you know, to play the game, to get through the game and to play that game and how proud he was. It it it, it all it, it all fits into the unity all for one, you know, we're, we've got your, we've got each other's backs. And, and that, and I, you know, and I think that's, you know, that's the um, message that this team sends. And that's the message that is coached, uh, you know, that is preached by the coach and is lived, you know, lived as best as it can by the team. That's not perfect. And, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it's it, you know it's it's a it's a group that seems to really care about each other, uh, and and you know they have each other's back, and and I think that you know just just played into the narrative last night with with you know Laviolette standing up for his team the way he did, and and I, and I also to think too, you know, for for a team that's that's essentially been, you know, in the playoffs for a couple of months and and mathematically clinched it a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, this has been a, a challenging stretch for the Rangers. You know, they're they're playing heavy teams. They're playing teams that are all playing for something. You know, they've played a, a lot of rivalry games. They've, you know, they've played a lot of the other top six or seven teams in the league over the last three or four weeks. They're really getting no break. And, 
you know, will this be good for them? I think in a way, you know, it, it can be good for them. It, it, it's, it's, you know, they're, they're kind of in this final stretch where I do think the coaching staff is learning about what's might work and might not work mm-hmm. um, in a first round when you're seeing the same team every other night for, you know, for two weeks. Um, but, th- you know, th- this is, you know, other teams are playing for something that the Rangers are, are, are playing against. And the Rangers are playing for something too. It's 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 been a it's been a tough stretch of hockey for them, and they and they and they've responded extremely well, most of the time. But you know what it says to me? It says he wants the division. He wants the conference. Oh, there's no doubt. They, he wants he, it. They want. They want it. They do. I don't. I don't know about President's Trophy, but I think they just they definitely want conference. They want yeah, tops in the sure. conference. Well, it's important. It's important. Yeah. First of all, they've been there for they've been there for a stretch. Yeah, but and again, I I don't I don't believe that the players should be thinking this way, and I and I and I would guess that they're not, but we can. And why would you want to play Tampa Bay in the first no. round of playoffs? <laughs> I mean, you know, you you run through this entire season, you're going to finish somewhere, you know, 112, 114, 116 points, and the first round you get Tampa Bay. Come on, they look good right now they look good tampa looks good that's but and it shouldn't matter but again you don't want to you don't want to grind through a series in april to try and win a cup in the middle of june like it does it does matter if that's how it works out you're gonna have to grind through it anyway right if you can get through a series in five and another one in five or six right i'm telling you it it killed us in 2012 yeah and we couldn't close them out it's killed us before like that is reality and so it works out how it should work out if you win the conference in terms of at the regular season right ending, you should get the best matchup and there's, there's a lot of talk but it about, doesn't work out but it doesn't work out for the second place team and and, and there's so year, much talk about one through eight i've been saying it since forever why are we not doing one through eight i don't have any idea there is no rational explanation for Nothing. it except for the fact the nhl likes its brackets so they can put out, you know, because the 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 brackets are fixed this way. If you're reseeding the entire playoffs, which is the only equitable way to do it, then you can't have a bracket. Well, how much money is a bracket? What help? I don't understand. What does that generate? This is what I don't understand. What I don't understand is why general managers and team owners are not upset over this. You're a general manager. You're trying to build the best team. Boston's going to be upset team. about it. Boston's right. going to be upset about it. Well, right. The that second, might help this. But, but they don't help seem nudge to this. be. I mean, remember a couple of years ago? Well, I think there was a year. Were you in Nashville the year of uh, play Winnipeg in the second round of the playoffs? No, and we got bounced. No, They, and, they yeah, traded for me because they thought they were playing Winnipeg. Okay. So, but but one year they played in the second round and they had the best two records in the league. Yeah, and that's how they set it up. It's it's crazy the way the way this format is set up. Now this year, there's you know there's not much disparity, and it's not as if one division is heavily weighted to the other division. When that happens, then there's chaos. Then you get Nashville, Winnipeg in the second round when they're the two best teams in the league. Now, well, Central will be like that. Now it just seems you know it's it's going to be the second place team in the East that gets caught in this horrendous first round matchup. You know, what it should be is one, eight two seven. Um, you yeah. know, the, the, but it's, it's not. And it would, you know, listen, the Rangers might be able to get through a, a you know, a series against Tampa. I don't want to sound defeatist now. Um, and you can make the oh, case. I still think they can they, beat them. I think you know, they if they take care of Tampa in the first round, quickly it, it gives them you know it gives them added confidence i mean you can you, you know it it's not gloom and doom if they play the lightning in the first round but it seems like it'd be inviting a lot of trouble you know that they, they they really it's don't like, look it's sport it's there are rules there should be rules in place for for fairness it sound like i'm going back on everything i've said if i'm a player on the rangers i don't care i'm telling you i don't care i yeah yeah, we all probably have our preferences. I had preferences, but it didn't matter. You know, I liked playing certain teams. I felt good against them, whatever. The sight lines in the building, all that stuff. 
like I go into Pittsburgh, I always had good games in Pittsburgh. So I got to, you know, I signed in Pittsburgh. It was great, but there's, there's no reason you play for six months, 82 of these things. And then you just make up some, yeah, not even, not even really geographical it divisions. Make that, that, like, there is, there is oh, no, man. there is no explanation. They talk about, well, the two, three within the division promotes rivalries. Come on. Yeah. You're only playing when you're only playing your division rivals three or four times during the season. What are we talking about rivalries now? Come on. Um, it, 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 it makes no sense. And, and for so long, the NHL had the most equitable system because it receded after every round. Yeah. So you were all, you know, if you, if you were finishing first, you always got the lowest team. If you were finishing second, you always got the, you know, the next to um, uh, lowest rung uh, team on the, on the ladder. So it worked perfectly. They switched it for, for no discernible reason. Um, and, and again, you don't have this groundswell of general managers and owners saying this is not fair. What it seems to me is they all take the, they take the collective approach that, well, maybe we'll be the, the team that finishes eighth one year and kind of makes, you know, and, and kind of makes it through because we have a favorable draw. You know, maybe we're going to be an average team one year, but but that's not the way you build your team. You don't build your team to be average. You build your team to be the best. So it it, it really, it, it, it baffles me. It just, it baffles me. It does. And, and, it, and it creates, it, it, it tends to create a scenario where the power matchups are early in the playoffs. Yes. The it, first round's then, awesome. It, it, it's great for the viewership, but then when, once a, when, when those power teams are eliminated in the first and second round, the viewership drops. Yeah. You know, it, it, it would be like in tennis. If, if, you know, back in the day, you had Federer and Nadal hooking up in the third round of a draw of a major. Why yeah. would you, hey, honestly, or you're, if you're right now, you had Alcaraz and, and Djokovic playing in the second round. What, yeah. what would you be doing? Why would you be doing that? And, and it's kind of like in all of these tournaments, people love, ep, you know, upsets, early round upsets until the consequences are there later in the tournament and you have lesser teams lesser players mm -hmm. playing and there's less interest so you know the best hockey in the playoffs comes for a variety of reasons in the first two rounds the yeah. matchups are generally better the players are fresher you know everybody's you know i mean you know everybody's not you know limping you know everybody's not playing on one leg oh, it hurt. yeah it hurts <laughs> i mean i've always thought honestly that be because of how hard this is the first two rounds should both be best of five but of course way, they, you know, they would never way, yeah that's a huge never, hit to the no, piggy never, bank no they would never do it yeah. but i think from a you know from a competitive standpoint you'd you'd see much better hockey in the conference finals and in, in the stanley cup finals I, you know the stanley cup finals it, it's a war of attrition you yes. know honestly it just is and and you know i i just you know you'd rather see the highest quality hockey being played in the finals. And it, it's so rare that you do. And, and it's understandable. I mean, you know, these guys, you know, what you go through is, 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 you know, physically is, is I'm sure emotionally too, just physically is remarkable. You know, you know what you put yourself through. It is. And then when it's over, you, you give it three days and you're back in yeah. after it again, but that's, yeah. that's how it is now, which I didn't mind. Cause I didn't, I didn't want to be, off too long um, what did you do the, what did you do the second summer um after, after after 15 yeah that's a good uh it's a good question we hung out for a bit Declan was uh my oldest was like not even a month old so I was a new dad and but I was back I was back skating working out pretty quick after just yeah you know there wasn't you just have to get back on the ice. It's such a pain. It's so, I mean, back to back was happened to me in college too. Back to back national title losses, mm -hmm. and so you just get you want to get on the ice. It's like I gotta 
flush this somehow and yeah. just get back to work. And then the third year, we lost in the conference finals. If we win that series, we win the cup. That was the yeah. that was the final. Yeah. So you get close, but there's you know, just going back to the one through eight, and imagine being in the East and complaining as a GM, and then the West is like, well, okay, I'm in Vancouver, and I, my first round matchup's Nashville, and we got to do that. Nine, so nine, after nine. After, yeah. after eleven days, we beat that or whatever. We've flown back across the country, you know, and yeah. then, or it's like that travel and it's it's nuts for yeah in the West. Plus, you have this kind of gimmicky sort of thing, and I don't know. I just don't know how many dollars it, it generates. I don't know how it could generate that much money where it's no one saying anything that's right, you know, of significance in the league, other than no, this is the way we're doing it. That's right. kind of all you get, right? Right? No, no, we're we're gonna do it this way. Why? <laughs> this is yeah. the way we're gonna do it. Right? Okay. It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. Uh, but the Rangers, they finished with Philly. They got the Islanders again Saturday. And then how about, Ottawa. How, how about the Flyers? Oh, Ay, man. Oh. You know, you know, you know, why? I argue with Mike Rupp all year. I'm like, they're making it. They're making it. You know, they're going to fall apart. How they're did, you know, apart. you know what? There, this was a season um, up to, say, two, three weeks ago. That was a hundred percent positive. If you know, if you yeah. divorce Carter Hart, you know, from the hockey yeah, element yeah, of, 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 of the Flyers, right? Um, it was nothing but upside. Nothing. You know, this team was, you know, was in, it was going to make the playoffs. They were like at least a year ahead, maybe two. Um, Second in the division for half the year. You know, Second in the Metro. Teams. Right, and and they were there was a stretch where they were like a point or two behind the Rangers, yeah. right? I, it was you know they were right there, um, and now they have turned this entirely positive season into a tire fire. I'm sorry, eight straight losses, and they, and they are getting pounded every night. It's nothing. They in lose by four period. or five. They lose by four or five goals every night. They gave up nine last night. Up nine. They've given up. Yeah, you know, they they you know they they've given up four goals or more in in every one of the eight losses yeah i i and and i think they're going to be recriminations what you know what what they are i don't know i'm i'm, I'm not there every day and even if i were, were there every day I'm, i wouldn't know probably um <laughs> why but <laughs> but um <laughs> but um you know this was a situation where everyone was coming out ahead and now they're going to be hard questions like what what happened why did this yeah. happen and you know i have my you know, theory or two but um they it's, don't it's, have so, the so 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 thursday night's game is going to be a hard game for the for the rangers against oh, against yeah. the flyers i mean it's going to be a hard game then obviously saturday afternoon is a hard game and then um against the islanders and then monday against ottawa shouldn't be too you know should be a, a, a final you know, just a final walkthrough. Actually, little shirt but, off your back night or something. And, but if the, you know, if the Rangers need to win that game, in order in order to clinch first place in the East, they're going to have to play that game. You know, it's not like you can just go yeah. out. And, well, you and, ha I think as a player, you have to, anyways, because that's when you actually physically can get hurt. If you're right, not invested right. and do the same things the same way, right? You you could physically get hurt, which isn't good. But right. they got time. I mean, they have five time. days. Yeah, so they good. have that Monday game, and then they have five days, isn't it? Uh, April twenty. They'll yeah, start, start the Saturday playoffs? or Sunday. Yeah, they'll start the twentieth or twenty first. That's they'll late. have some time. Yeah. Why is it so late, Larry? Well, the season doesn't end until Wednesday. They they end on on Monday, so the season ends the season on on Wednesday. End first week in April. Yeah. Well, I, you know, because <laughs> this yeah. is the way we're doing it. This is why we're doing it. You know what? Because because teams and and it's not as it, it may not apply as much now, but teams didn't want to play home games in October. You know because you'd think the season really should should start the first week of October, and that's when it should yeah. start. If if not the if not the last week of September, um, you know, the first week of October. But teams don't want to have home dates in October, so. You know, you, you always too have too bad. That's the way you know, it is. Because you know, but that's what you know, the owners say 
we don't want our home dates in October. We, you know, we, you know, we only get 88% of capacity in October. We get 97% in December, January, February. So that's when we want our home dates. And so, you know, that's an issue. And so everything gets pushed back. There's the bye week. There are, mm, you know, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a difficult schedule because I don't understand why there are so many nights that there's one game on the schedule. You look at it and say, I don't, how, how could this be? Why are they playing one game tonight? And then, Every and Monday then and Wednesday, and then you play, and then you see a team playing five games in seven days. And, you know, and they've played one in the last six. So, and, but again, I'm not dealing with, yeah, you know, imagine trying to make the schedule. No, no. You know, I mean, honestly, yeah. You know, I mean, this is something that after like an hour of looking at it, I would, I would just say, you know, I, I quit. I, yeah. I, I quit. You know, <laughs> good, good luck. I would, I would write a note. I would write a note to my, you know, successor. I would, I would write, good luck to you. <laughs> you know, that would, that would be my advice. Like, like Brian Leach working for Department of Player Safety. Yeah, Brian Leach. Thanks. I'm done. Yeah. Um, right. Look, they could uh Rangers could play I mean, who the heck knows? This is gonna it's gonna be fun to see who gets in. I've loved yeah. watching what Pitt's been able to do, specifically what yeah. Sid's been able to do, just dragging them into that. But yeah. it could be caps, could be pens, islanders, red wings, sure. or it could yeah. be the flyers. So if they take care of business the way they're yeah, they've been doing all year. You gotta give them a lot of credit. It's been right. yeah. It's been a, there was a challenging six weeks, I think. Yeah. And they, you know, you know, you know, what I, you know here, here's the unanswerable question. If the all star break had come three weeks later, Ooh. what would those weeks have looked like for the Rangers? Did they, did they need that break to reset themselves or were they going to come out of it anyway? Because if you, you think about it, they won 12 out of 26 games. It was a long stretch where they weren't yeah. very good. So if you add another 10 games to that and they're four, so. four and two, yeah. then we're, you know, then you're looking at a team that's why, you know, and then you're, you're not in first place anymore. Now you're mm -hmm. trying, you know, now you're in that wild card territory. So, you know, it it's just, and and you know I'm I'm not suggesting that they don't deserve as much credit. Maybe they deserve more for for recognizing that things needed to change. That what had gone on the previous six or seven weeks was not acceptable. No one was going to accept it, and they needed to fix it immediately. And they came out, and they came out with tough games. They they came out, you know, they opened against Colorado and Tampa, mm -hmm. and they won both of those games. So you know. You were, you know, I remember being in Toronto at the All Star Game, thinking, "Wow, you know, if they lose these two, then what are we looking at?" Yeah. But you know, they, they, you know, they reversed it immediately coming out of the break. Uh, you know, they were, you know, a different team. They've they've lost you know, six games since the end of January. Uh, honestly, they've they've you know, their, their record their their record, and and I remember thinking this. And it, and it was the year you after you left in fourteen fifteen the president's trophy year, and and they won that with Hank being out like for seven weeks. That was when you know Cam was that his, was that his neck. Yeah, he got hit yeah, in the throat shot. shot. And I remember thinking these guys never lose. They never. I mean, and this is yeah. you know, and and you know that was more you know more expected because that you know it seemed like there was more pedigree to that team. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know they had, they had a real good playoff history, and you know they'd gone to the finals the year before. Um, but that was a team that just won games, won games, won games, and um, um, you know won games until you know they couldn't win the fourth game against you. Uh, yeah, that was a in Tampa. That I was a shock. Being, I, honestly, being in that I know series, you know, they, they turn it talk, on. Yeah, we don't have an answer. Talk, and yeah, they talked did. about it a lot. Is it's the most mystifying playoff, and and I know Zook was out. You know, Zook had gotten hurt in the in the first round, yeah. Um, so he was out, and Girardi and and Stahl and McDonough were all hurt by the end of the series. But and Yandel, 
but yeah, right on Keith. And um, but it didn't stop them from scoring like a million goals in Tampa, and it it didn't stop them from being shut out the last two games of the guy. It, it is the most mystifying it's series. Weird. That that I that I that I can you know try recall. playing in it. We couldn't stop them. We're at home, and I'm like this. That light went off six, seven times every time we're at home. I'm like what? I'm like, how is this? Yeah. Then we go put I mean, on the clinic. Rick Nash's Rick Nash's best game as a Ranger. His best. Uh, he was he was great. Yeah. On um, he was great on the road in that series. Great. He and JT were playing together. Yeah. Um, yeah. JT almost broke my kneecap with a slapper, but that was it. Yeah, that was. This team, I mean, this team is, it's not, and it's not just, it's a pleasure to cover them now. It's not just Igor. There was a certain energy that they were going through during that tough stretch where, you know, I saw a lot of sunken shoulders on the bench. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of, uh, it's not our night. And then I didn't see a lot of pushback. And then Mm -hmm. they they did early in the year. They had something to prove and they proved it. And then they went through that lull. It was a long one. They got their goalie figured out or he figured himself out. And then they all had that attitude again. Like, no, we're winning. We're better. And they're winning games. They're beating good teams. They're yeah. getting contributions. You know, you know what? A lot of people. You know, it just reminded me that, um, and you know, this is the, you know, a Rangers focused podcast, but that, and, and I'm not obviously second guessing Patrick Waugh at all, but the fact that, Varlamov, you know, Varlamov is now their number one goalie. Mm-hmm. And they're playing a game against the Rangers that they need to win. And it's not Sorokin. Yeah. It's kind of like, okay, I get it. I get it. But it would be like if the Rangers were in that position and suddenly you're saying, well, Jonathan Quick's going to play this game. And, and it's like, well, wait a second. I thought Sorokin was the best goalie in the history of the world you know he, he you know so it, it's just it, you know it's fast it, it's fascinating honestly because if if anyone had said at any point last year or even through december we're gonna have a must win game against the rangers both of our goalies are going to be healthy and it's not going to be sorokin people would have said what are you talking about so, you know, it, it's, it, you know, it, it's just so interesting because we, you know, we fixated so much on the January issues yeah. that Shesterkin was having. And, well, Quick's going to be the number one. Quick's going to be the one. I was like, what are you talking about? You know, but, yeah. but Varlamov is the number one. Yeah, right. <laughs> it it <laughs> happened. Yeah. He laughed it off. And then, it but who's going to argue with Patrick? No, Wall, he didn't, no, Who he decides can't. to play goal? No, no, of course. Of you know? course. Of course. Like you're gonna go in, hey Patrick, I really think you're making a mistake here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't hear you. My two Stanley Cup ring plug yeah. in my ear. Oh yeah. Stop. I can't wait. I can't wait for the last week watching. I want to see kind of what Lavi does with lines. Hopefully Meek is fine. Do you do you have a report on that? Everything checked out or no? Nothing. <laughs> we'll get a report uh, next no, they time. Didn't, uh, Chris <laughs> next, didn't it, 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 next training camp we'll, we'll get a report. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> pulling teeth all right well hopefully yeah. he's fine i think yeah. that was you know i don't know i you know fast sport. again yeah and ho- obviously if, if he was he was on the bench for the final seconds or you know shift yeah, or so yeah. of the game and if certainly he had not passed any tests he went through he would not have been on, on the yeah bench. You don't, so, you're not allowed to be you know, now whether that means he's going to play Thursday night. I, I don't know about that. You know, that's... yeah, sometimes I mean whiplash feels has some similarities to uh yeah. Well he had time. he had a, a whiplash type injury five, six years ago that he was out for a while. I think it was yeah, on a reverse it was on a reverse hit from uh Bergeron. He was out for a while. Long term it's not a big thing, but those those are not pleasant. I've had one and yeah. You can't move your head. You get nauseous. It's uh, right, right. It's no good. So no you know whether he's going to be placed tonight. Um, yeah, they. Uh, you know, there there are a couple of there are a couple of decisions. Um, I think, I think Zach Jones played so well Ooh, yeah. um, against 
Montreal the other night that he has inserted himself into the mix. And I would like to see Zach Jones play the rest of the way. I I, w- I would like to see Zach Jones in the lineup for the for yeah, the. Roommate. I know Molly Molly loves uh, shouting him out, and the UMass product has been. Man, that's impressive to me. I mean, I was with him in, at Worlds years ago. He's a young kid coming out of school, and to be able to do what he did, not playing, and then when he had to play, play well, really well. Yeah, and earn that trust. They're hard decisions. I mean, you want that depth if you're a manager. If you're Chris Drew, you want that depth. You want the decisions to be hard. I mean, I'm sure Lavi wants more good players. He, you know, he doesn't want to just say this is all we sure. have and yeah. trot the same guys out. Yeah. And that internal competition, that's not pleasant sometimes, but it makes your team better. So the fact that he is he's a contributing member now, more so than obviously he was the first, you know, 80% yeah. of the year almost. Yeah. It's a yeah. great thing. And he adds an element. If he plays with that confidence in a playoff scenario, then that is yeah. that's tough to scout. That's tough to yeah. you know game plan for. So yeah. yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun final week. Uh, thank you, Larry. We're wrapping up here. And as always, appreciate your insights. That was fun. Thanks. All right. I'm going to take my boiling point minute here and I'm going to shift it to uh, something that I like to bring a little bit of attention to. And it's a, a tribute that happened at Fenway Park, the Red Sox home opener for a great man and a great woman in Tim and Stacy Wakefield. Uh, they both died way too soon. We lost them. Uh, Tragically, uh, Tim and uh, and then Stacy shortly after, and the Red Sox did a great thing. They they honored him, uh, actually honored both of them at their opening day. We saw their kids, Brianna, and Trevor, on the field, and unveiled uh, you know his number forty nine on the wall. And he's a great man. He lived a couple houses down from me when he was here in the winter. He's in Florida, but when he's when we were here together in the summer, I saw him quite a bit, played some golf with him. He introduced me to a lot of people, brought me down to a pro-am down in Connecticut that they play every year. Um, guy was on his phone a lot, talking and helping and trying to be a make the world a better place. You know, he and his wife really did a tremendous amount for other people. Never really asked for much. Um you know, until, until his wife got sick. And when she got sick, he dropped everything to try and help her. And, you know, it's just really sad. So we feel for the, the kids, obviously, you know, it happened you know, a few months ago and, and Stacy was more recent. Uh, but I just want to let people know that they were great people. They did things the right way. And I wanted to take time here to honor them. Sorry if, uh, even if you are a Yankees fan, I'm sure, you know, and a uh, quick story. I asked him after he'd won, you know, a couple world series with the Red Sox. We were on the drive down to Connecticut. It was about two hour drive, and I had to ask him. I said, "Do you still think about Aaron Boone hitting that home run, at the walk off in the playoffs in two thousand three?" And he looked me in the eye and he says, "Every single day, he was a competitor. I knew he threw knuckleballs, but this guy was a competitor. He was a ball player. He loved his craft. He did it forever. Uh, he had two hundred wins as a pitcher in the major leagues, which is un- unbelievable. He." Uh, even after winning championships, still bugged him, the Aaron Boone thing. But uh, he's just a great man, so I wanted to just take a little bit of time. I know it's probably longer than a minute, but he is he's wonderful. He's missed. So is Stacy. They're great people. You know, their their loss is felt throughout our neighborhood here every day, and we just always wish for the absolute best for Brianna and for Trevor and all his former teammates. I know it's hard. It's really hard for all of them, too, because he's just – they were teammates for a long time. They're still teammates now, so it's tough. So our prayers are for that family and good on, good on the Red Sox for doing a wonderful job honoring that family yesterday at their opening day. Jake Brown, producer of the show here. You've heard me on past seasons of the podcast. Yeah. You might, might have forgot what my voice sounds like. Some people might turn it off. Some might say, oh, look, he's back in a Dixie Cup shirt that Brian would say you saw in the Max Fire. and Saved by the Bell. Uh, an Asian size 4XL. The conversion said American XL. Clearly it was not because it's still a little bit big on me, but uh, we're rocking it here to close out episode 152 of Up in the Blue Seats, our New York Rangers podcast. 
from the New York Post. A touching tribute there. Great stuff, Brian, from Tim Wakefield, who you know gave a lot of Yankee fans nightmares. But what a guy, what a person he was, and a tragic loss. So thoughts and prayers with him and his family. And uh, you knew him very well. So great stuff there. Let's close it out like we always do, like you and Molly always do. You'll kick us off with your first star of the week. I got to go with Christopher Kreider. He is going to he's gonna get 40. I'm not jinxing. There's no jinx. He's getting 40. What a year. So many guys, what a year. Maybe next podcast we'll kind of go down a list and say what we loved about the whole lineup. But for, for right now, I got cries just doing his thing in front of the net. Always. He's always there. He's just producing. And what a deal, him long term, being there for so long. It's just, it's great to see. Love crowds and let's go get to 40. Over under price to get in the garden when his number is retired in the Raptors, probably around $600. It would be my guess just to get in the nosebleeds or standing room when his number gets retired one day. Another guy who, you know, if they win a cup, his number gets retired one day is Mika Zibanejad. He's my second star of the week. More so for the fact, listen, he had two goals against the Canadians. He's been playing pretty well, um, five, six points in the month of April so far. He's dishing, he's scoring, but him being healthy after that hit, controversial or not, however you want to call it, the fact that he got up and there was no, what we know of serious injury, who knows, maybe he does miss the game Thursday. The fact that he's okay and he's not going to miss time, we think, is monumental for the Rangers, Brian, because if they were without Mika Zibanejad in the first round, who knows what could happen? They need Mika Magic come playoff time. So he's the second star. And our joint star, I think we agree, the entire team. Because the New York Rangers, Brian, have tied a franchise record for wins in a single season with 53. Their next win, and if you assume they win one of the last three games, they're all at home, they'll get to do it in front of the home fans at the Garden, win a franchise record, 54 games. That's pretty special. And they need to. They need to. They want to win that conference. They want the – they for sure want the second wild card, I think, and they want to win that conference. And it just puts a bow on what they've done, what they've battled through, that lull we had in the middle of the season that Larry and I talked about. Like, during that time, you think this is going to be a franchise record-setting year? No, no one thought that. So, yeah, to give the team credit, give – you know, give Chris Drury credit, Peter Laviolette. Some changes last off season. It's it seemed to be working out really well, and you can't fluke your way into fifty wins. And you don't really just break hundred year old records that often either. So, congrats to them. Get it done. It's been a great season so far, and it's just the start of what can be a special postseason. It has all the makings. This Rangers team, you know, we don't want to be mushes here, like you like to say a mush, but <laughs> it, there's a special feeling of magic in the air, and they got to hold it down for the Garden. The New York Knicks are without Julius Randle for the rest of the year. They might be screwed. That was my hope as one of the teams. Now that team has to be the Rangers because it does not look like the Knicks without their second best player are going to be able to go on a run. Uh, so we're excited for the playoffs and we'll be covering it here on Up in the Blue Seats. Our plan right now is to do after every two games to do a show. So likely after we'll do a playoff preview. Molly will be back next week with Larry and you for the playoff preview. Likely next Wednesday with the playoffs beginning Saturday, Sunday. Once we know the dates the times we'll have a playoff preview and then after game two after game four and then tbd you know if it's a sweep after game four after game five whenever the series ends stay tuned for that and make sure you're subscribed on apple Podcasts, spotify google amazon wherever you get your podcast give us that five star rating write in a nice review subscribe to the new york post sports youtube page you can watch brian you can watch larry um on there you can see the dixie cup shirt right now if you're watching give us a thumbs up if you like the show if you like the dixie cup shirt uh, and comment below, how are you feeling about the blue shirts? Who do you want the Rangers to end up playing in the first round? They could play one of about five teams right now. We'll have that answer on the next episode. So sound off in the comments. And what did you think of the hit on Mika? Was it dirty? Was it accidental? Let us know what you think in the comments. For Brian Boyle, for Larry Brooks, I'm Jake Brown. Molly, Larry, and Brian are back next week for a regular season recap and a Rangers playoff preview it's time the most wonderful time of the year the stanley cup playoffs begins next weekend and we'll be here to cover it right here on up in the blue seats talk to you then